Good morning and welcome to the 2021 Amelia Concourse d'Elegance. Here we are at the Volkswagen booth. A huge thank you to Volkswagen for making this video possible. And what we're going to do in this video is show you all of the electric vehicles here at the Amelia. The theme for this year is electrified vehicles. So we're going to see things from the Cadillac Lyric, Hummer EV, Bollinger Motors, Lucids, of course, ID4. And we're going to go through and try and find every EV parked out here in the lawn and bring it to you. Hey, Rich. Hey. Good to see you, man. How's everything? How's it been, dude? Dude, good. Do you bring the Sharp down? I wanted to bring that damn thing so bad. We're starting off our electric expedition with this right here, the Volkswagen ID4. This is, of course, as you know, my favorite new EV on sale. It costs just about $40,000. You get a $7,500 tax credit, three years of free charging at Electrify America. You can be sold on the numbers or you can be sold on how pleasant the car is. Let me show you inside because that's where all the smiles start to happen. Sorry. <laughs> Inside we have massaging seats, a white steering wheel here in the first edition, a beautiful glass roof, play and pause buttons on the pedals. It's a pleasant car, drives really well, good tech, driver assistance systems, all is standard, so it'll do lane centering down the highway on the base car, the Pro, and uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite EVs altogether. Let's do some more exploring, starting with this cool rusty van behind me. This is my favorite vehicle here. It is the Electro Transporter. Cool story. So Volkswagen years ago sold a fleet of vehicles to the Tennessee Valley, Tennessee Valley Authority, and they built the dam system in Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, which houses some of my favorite roads, such as the Tail of the Dragon, etc. So Fontana Dam, which is a place I've spent a lot of time, is the largest dam east of the Mississippi. This van was spent probably driving somewhere around there. It was locally based around Chattanooga, a little bit farther west. But take a look, it's been converted in period back in the early 80s, late 70s to an electric vehicle. It's got lead acid batteries, so it has a DC motor that's like less than 30 volts. And Volkswagen is so cool that they're going to find a man who actually did the original conversions, hire him, and then restore this thing back to its original glory. However, the paintwork, as I've begged them to do, will stay patinaed. So that is awesome. Let's take a look inside. I love all the original badging and uh, graphics that they put on this thing. It's just so neat. And so this was really a service vehicle for the dam system. If you take a look inside over this panel, you can see the top of some of these batteries. They've already started to work on some restoration of this vehicle, but take a look at the front. It looks just like a normal Volkswagen bus from back in the day. It just happens to be electric. And when this is restored, guess what? we get to drive it. So stay tuned for that video at some point in the future. And now we're at the parade area. So join me and we're starting with the Cadillac Lyric. This will be coming out sometime in late 22, 23, I believe is a 2023 model year. It's the first time I've been able to see the Lyric in person. And I have to say it's much better than the renderings that I saw. So I'm actually coming around to the Lyric thing. Come around and take a look at the front because I posted online about the Lyric and I said, you know, what do you think about this thing? And everyone was grills huge and it is, but you know, it's cool. You can do so much more with design with electric vehicles because you don't have a big combustion engine. You don't have cooling requirements, some, but not as much as a combustion engine. And you can play around with the design, but I don't think this will have any issues cooling itself down with a grill that big. It is filled in though. Let's go down the line. So Lyric rolling on 23 inch rims here on the uh, reproduction version, which is huge. Interior looks amazing. If you can grab a peek inside, very neat. Of course, it will have Super Cruise and other Cadillac features. Take a look at the back end. This is the most controversial side of the car that I think, but it looks pretty neat. It's going to be spacious, hatchback, all-wheel drive, of course, and have GM's Ultium battery tech inside, which will lead to a pretty interesting package that will, of course, run through all of our tests. Down the line we go. We have, oh, battle of the pickup trucks coming up next. The Bollinger Motors. This one is the SUV. They also brought a pickup truck. And yep, this is the SUV. And then we have the Hummer EV. This is the truck. Uh, let's see sizing wise. So everyone wants to know how big is the Hummer? Well, it's taller than a Kyle, I think, uh, or just about the same. Pretty neat, love this particular one. This one is the SUV version, yes. 
and behind it is the pickup. So let's figure out how to squeeze through some pet traffic and go down the line. So glance at the Bollinger SUV and the Hummer EV SUV on the way down. Really neat. And then of course we come to two opposites of electrification. We have the Efficiency King. This is called, you know, the way I look at it really is a very smart way to get range out of your car. 113-ish kilowatt hour battery pack makes it go over 500 miles on a charge in this Grand Touring trim versus a lot of range, but so much more battery over here in the GM. The cool thing though is this can crab walk and it can rip with over a thousand horsepower. The Lucid is also stupidly fast. If you're curious to learn more, about the Lucid. We took it out yesterday for a ride and that is a previous video here on this channel. So check that out. It's pretty neat. Uh, can't wait, of course, to get on the road in the Hummer EV uh, SUV or pickup. They're both going to be really neat. And yes, we are going to take them to Moab and do some off-roading. So stay tuned. Down the line we go. We have, of course, another Volkswagen ID4 here in the line, and this is a first edition white on gray spec car. We've seen this many times and have already gone through. So all of these cars will be going down the line. Behind it, one of my favorites, the Porsche Taycan. This particular one, let's take a look at the spec. Seems to be painted in shock. Black wheels, black calipers and it is a turbo, so a non-turbo S Taycan, really fast, dual motor, of course, two-speed transmission in the rear, one of the few production EVs to have that. In fact, it might be the only, and I just think it's physics-defying. One of my favorite electric cars altogether. We hold the cannonball record with this thing for electric vehicles. And now we have the Mustang Mach-E. This is the E4X, which means it's the all-wheel drive extended range, so 99 kilowatt-hour battery pack installed, 88 kilowatt-hour usable, dual motor of course larger rear motor than the front motor in this one and then soon we will have the GT coming down the line that will be of course a two large motors over 450 horsepower zero to 60 in three and a half seconds that's going to be one to keep an eye on and yes it's just under seventy thousand dollars I believe it competes maybe even under 60 it's right on point with Model Y performance those are going to go head to head really looking forward to that but no Mustang Mach-E GT here now it looks like we have a super super performance AC Cobra that with an electric conversion. Now I, I haven't seen this car. I don't know how they've put it together, but it looks like we have a couple battery modules wired in uh, series and parallel. Really neat vehicle, huge rubber on the rear. Can't imagine that that's built for range. It's probably a small battery with a huge power output. And then we have one of the happiest cars. I love this. It's the Mini Cooper SE, of course. This particular one, I think somewhere around 33, 34 kilowatt hour battery pack front motor of course but really fun it's sort of the underdog mini spirit we have drag races and track tests of this car on our channel you can go back and watch those as far as what's going on over here that's all the electric stuff let's see what else we can find as we're making our way around the Amelia Island Concourse d'Elegance, of course, we find this. It's an original Monopoly car, and yes, it's electric. Runs on 48-volt uh, battery pack system, and uh, pretty neat. Came from the Lone Motor, Lane Motor Museum in uh, Tennessee, which is a place I love to go. Take a look at that. Super cool, and it does run, by the way, and drives. I saw them drive it in last night. Heading over here towards the Mini booth because I spot something really special. You can see the Mini Cooper SE for 2021 on the right side. It's the midlife uh, cycle impulse, so it's a refresh. But take a look at this one here on the left. This is wild. This is the original Mini Cooper uh, e, basically, this was an experimental project to do electric vehicle powertrain validation out in the public. Uh, our colleague here on this channel, Tom Malagny, owned number 250, I believe. This one's 237. Most of them were decommissioned and crushed, unfortunately, but thankfully this one works just fine and it's still rolling along. And uh, here we are able to see it. I think it was 2009 or 2007, something like that. Let's take a look. Yeah, doesn't say, but somewhere in the mid early 2000s. That was a functioning EV with actually, I think, quietly, more range than the new Mini Cooper SE, I think. <laughs> yeah, this one, uh, while it is wildly cool, definitely not electric. Let's continue. And here we are heading over to Bollinger Motors. So 
They pulled all some cars out for the parade that they're going to run through, but take a look. Here's the pickup truck version of the Bollinger. Because there's no combustion drivetrain, you can have a total pass-through system right through the front. This is going to be a really cool vehicle. Of course, I think Bollinger is going to be one of the best powertrain suppliers as sort of sleds and uh, maybe even a tier one supplier to other automakers for their electric vehicle equipment. This is really cool, quite expensive, really boxy, taking that G-Wagon approach of adapting a military style vehicle to the public. So like it and uh, can't wait to do some off-roading with this one too. Should we do Hummer EV versus Bollinger versus whatever else other electric off-roaders there are that I'm not thinking of comparison? Let us know if you want to see that. And this is the GT Electric by Alpha, really cool. We met the man who's been creating this project yesterday. So amazing, absolutely love it. And uh, take a look at the coach work on the inside too. You have the baggage in the back that goes with the car. Really neat electric systems. The charging port is actually this little spot under this cap on the back of the vehicle. If you take a look, it's just a type two European plug right now, but they can adapt it for our type one and CCS fast charging in the future. Has different levels of regen, of course. And uh, yeah, just, just really neat. The driver, the uh, creator, I should say, wanted uh, said that this should really be his enthusiast electric vehicle. He wanted to bring a raw sports car like feeling. You can see the carbon fiber body structure coming through the paint there, sort of like an old Ferrari F40 or something like this. Really neat uh, creation. Walking over this way, I see an awesome, perfect spec for GT. However, behind that, I see something arguably even cooler. We have the Mach-E 1400. Take a look at this thing. I haven't been able to see it in person officially yet. <laughs> There's a story behind that, some of you may know. But if you take a look, man, does that thing just look the business. So this is, you know, when Ford launched the Mustang Mach-E, I guess maybe a year ago, they worked with RTR, which is a really cool organization, to create essentially a electric vehicle mind changer. They would put people in this thing. It has four seats. The whole idea is throw some people in this thing, shred it, drift it, rip it, and change people's minds on electrification. It is not the same drivetrain as the Ford Mustang Mach-E. It does have a different specialized battery pack. I think it's only about 60 64 kilowatt hours, huge discharge rate, seven electric motors in this thing, and a really neat inverter technology all put together to just blow people's minds, and I love it. And we have another Mach-E 4X here, finished in one of my favorite colors. Although I still think if you want the YouTube thumbnail color on a Mach-E, you gotta get Grabber Blue. What else do we have? We have some normal Mustangs, another Ford GT, and I think that's it for the Ford Electrics. Let's run over here to the Lucid booth. So Lucid is a up and coming EV startup. I mentioned that we have a video up earlier in this video. Uh, yesterday we got to ride in one. Let's take a look at some of the other specs that they have here and other stuff. Uh, Lucid's really neat because it's run by Peter Rawlinson who is a total nerdy engineer and ekes out every last bit of efficiency and performance. What that means is they go through and build all their power electronics in-house at Casa Grande, Arizona. So let's see some of that stuff right now. Right, this is this right here is your onboard charger, essentially. It's 80 amp, 19.2 kilowatt. The car, is, the battery pack nominal voltage is over 900 volts. It's actually closer to 1,000. Uh, insane battery pack technology. It can DC fast charge north of 300 kilowatts and it has over 517 miles of range on the charge in the Grand Touring Edition. Let's see what cars they have here. Oh, neat, they have a little chassis over here that we're able to explore. So let's take a look at this. This is basically a cutaway of the Lucid Air underneath, so you can see all of the individual battery cells. You have a front electric motor, rear electric motor. Of course, there's no driveline connecting them, so you get the benefit of a flat floor in the rear. Uh, amazing power electronics, like I mentioned, air suspension all around, and uh, just insane levels of integration and efficiency. The first that we've seen truly from an automaker outside of Tesla up to this point. That's pretty neat. If you look over to the right, I see a Taycan over there on the high voltage high performance sign it's uh, you know soul electrified is the Taycan's tagline and we have a Formula E Porsche just to the left of it that's neat how cool would it be to do a little comparison between Porsche's Formula E car and the Taycan Turbo S lots of ideas going for stories that I'd love to show with you guys but <laughs> excuse me take a look at this uh, <laughs> Formula E car just amazing there's also some old stuff here too with electric motors, super cool, a whole line of them. Couldn't tell you a thing about them, 
But what do you guys say? They run on electricity, don't they? Looks like they run on something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's electric. And I think we've kind of reached the end. We've done a full loop. Take a look behind me over here. Just amazing hardware that's not electric. You know, the, the thing that I love about electric vehicles is it's fostering a new era of car enthusiasm. And this event really embodies everything I love about the past of really neat combustion vehicles and technology from old Porsches to old American muscle. Anything you can imagine, weird and wacky stuff, all the way to the newest normal everyday EV, such as ID4, and guess what? Everyone's loving everything. My kind of event, my kind of place. Huge thanks to Volkswagen for sending us down. And uh, that's the end of this video. See you on the next one.